For the last 11 years, I have had solar panels on the roof and they have never been cleaned, but I have recorded every single minute of their operation. And now I want to feed that data into ChatGPT, the more analytics part, so I can see if there's any degradation of the panel. So, uh, hello and welcome to another video. As you can see, I'm uh, on vacation. You can see that it's a staycation, so it um, means I have plenty of time to check all of this out and play with it. So, first a bit of background information. Back in 2012, when you got a new solar power panel installation, solar power setup, not all of the inverters that converts DC to AC had a uh, web interface or were connected to the internet. It was called it was kind of a premium features that were just getting started up. And I got uh, an inverter from the company Coastal, and it was rebadged as Luxra. Did something clever with the name there, but it could log into their website and upload data every 15 minutes. But that seems to be long gone. I can't connect anymore. Sometimes, at one one time, they had an app, but it doesn't seem to show anything now. So luckily, I wrote my own Python script that saved the data every minute into a database and um, except from like perhaps a few months where I had a corrupted database without noticing it, I have every minute for the last 11 years. So that's what I'm going to feed into chat GPT. So let me just show you what I'm going to do. So I have written a small explanation for chat GPT after I upload the data. So uh, I can tell you that as well so you can see what I'm I'm going to do here. Can you see it on the screen? It's a little, it's a little smallish. It's not perfect, but um, it will have to do. Anyway, hi. This is a CSV output from a database containing informa information about my solar panels production. It has recorded every minute of the inverter operation since installation. But I have chosen just to export the last minute of every day to cut down on data size. Feel free to suggest other exports. I don't know if it's going to do that. This is what the table looks like uh, that the data in the CSV file came from. And each line of the, no, each uh, field in every line of the CSV file output are in order of this table. Um, and this is the explanation of the data in each field. And I show that uh, data is the Danish date, date and time of the record, total kilowatt hours, the total kilowatt hours produced since installation. I'm sorry if you hear some hard disks. Uh, Make a lot of noise. I'm just playing around with an on-rate server I'm building. Um, yeah, total kilowatt hours produced since installation. Daily kilowatt hours, how much produced that day at time of record. Uh, data, day two. String one, volts, string two volts, string three volts, voltage of each solar panel. String, only two are used. I have two strings. Line one, power, W, and so forth. Uh, what output? to grid, uh, what output to grid on each of the three phases. String one current, two and three current, e is some pair on each solar panel. String, again, only two are used, and inverter mode, status of the inverter. And then I show it the, uh, the uh, SQL query I used to create the, um, the uh, CSV file. And uh, let's upload it to ChatGPT, uh, the CSV file. I'm just getting this out of the way. Um, hope it will understand. <laughs> uh, should be interesting. Okay. All right. Check if there's only one record per day. And if there are any missing data, 
slash days as there might have been a database. I know there has been, but I want to see if it figures it out. <laughs> Analyzing. Come on, man. Error analyzing. There seems to be an issue accessing the data column in your CSV file, which could be due to a mismatch in the column name. To resolve this, I will first inspect the data, blah, blah, blah. It does not have headers, which is causing the illness. To properly analyze, I will manually assign he headers based on the structure of your database table. Once the header is correctly assigned, I can proceed to check the daily records and any missing data. Let's do that next. Fantastic. <laughs> Saves me the trouble of figuring out how to make the uh, header. Each data set in a record has exactly one record. This is consistent with your approach of exporting the last meter every day. There seems to be missing days in the data set. The, tumble, tumble, the total number of days between the earliest and the last record is 4,155 days. However, there's only, only um, 3,915 records. This suggests that 240 days of data missing. So almost a year in total. I know it's not one complete year. Um, and there's also days where there wasn't any output, so but I'm, I think that's not part of it. Okay, let's go to the meat of it. From the, uh, now I have to phrase it right. Can you check to see, I'll just, <laughs> if there seems to be any degradation of the panels during the time of operation. <laughs> okay, this is interesting. To assess the potential degradation of the solar panels over time, we can analyze the trend in daily energy production measures in kilowatt hours. This involves examining the daily kilowatt hour field in your data set, which records the amount of energy produced each day. It's good that it explains it back to me so we know as it is understand it. We'll look at the trend southern general gradual decrease. Ooh, oh, I'm just a bit late. Uh, it's it's faster, it's faster, it's faster, it's faster, it's faster than me now. <laughs> I can speak. Let's see. Uh, we will look at such trends as gradual decrease in daily energy production over time. It's important to know that solar panel degradation can be influenced by many factors, including environmental conditions, panel quality, and maintenance. The typical degradation for solar panels is around 1, 0 0.5 to 1% a year, but this can vary. Mine are from ah, what they call the big French company, saint -Gobain. I chose a company that I think, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it in French, I'm sorry. But I chose a company where there would be a warranty and there would be a chance the company would be around. Anyway, let me proceed the analysis. Oh, so it's making the graph interesting. Um, yes, it's big enough on the recording here. So as you can, oh, we have a bit of a storm outside. So you can see there's a missing data there in 2018. That's where I had to cover up the database. This plot displays the daily solar production in kilowatt hour or time as recorded by your solar panels. Here are some operations. It doesn't seem to be downwards, it seems to be, if anything, upwards. The plot displays daily solar panels are recorded. Here are some observations and some considerations. Trend analysis look for any clear downwards trend in the data and consistent decrease over time could indicate degradation. That's what I wanted you to do. Seasonal variation, solar energy production and actually fluctuates due to seasonal changes. I think I covered that in my two other solar panel videos. I think I've done two or three videos on my solar panels the last few years. And alarmities could be certain factors. 
Spikes equipment issues, data logging errors, we just talked about, might not be indicative of panel degradation, which is why I want something more intelligent to look at it. A long-term trend, degradation usually slow, gradual process, a long-term trend over several years could be more indicative of degradation than short-term fluctuations. From the visual representation, it appears there are fluctuations, but conclusively determined to continue determine degradation and more detailed statistical analysis or comparison with the expected performance model would be necessary. If you observe the long, a long, if you observe a consistent long-term downward trend in muscle degradation, but keep in mind these uh, influences of seasonal uh, environmental factors on energy production. Blah blah blah. So, what does it look? like to you can you see any indication of degradation here it will not say that okay oh it, it does say that does not appear that that okay now that it okay. <laughs> it now says there does not appear to be a clear consistent downward trend in the data such trends blah, 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 blah. instead the production seem production level seems to vary with some higher pairs and lower some pairs of higher and lower production which is typical no clear indication of degradation from the visual analysis analysis alone, there's no obvious indication of a steady decline in performance that would suggest degradation. However, this assessment is quite spacious, does not account for factor change. Right, so it says if the weather changes, we got more rain, global warming, so we don't get as much sun, blah blah blah. Um For more definitive assessment of panel degradation and more detailed statistical analysis required, this could involve normalizing the data for seasonal variations and comparing annual production over the years. One thing I regret I didn't get, they also had an add-on that could show solar output that could measure um, solar radiation as a separate unit and it could log that as well. It was a few hundred dollars and I didn't buy it. I regret that now. Um, uh, that could have been fun to see. Is this, yeah, so sort of, uh, in summary, the plot provided there's no clear visual evidence of degradation. Okay. It does, however, this does not consecutively rule it out and more analysis, blah, blah, blah. It's what ChatGPT does, is that it's getting so, uh, what's it called? Cover my ass. <laughs> like, what is, um, let me see it per year. Show me the production per year since beginning. Um, we can also throw a few other interesting questions at it. We could show, we can ask it. Um, yeah, I would like to know what was the best production day. I always try to beat 40 kilowatts. I think I just managed to... Okay, that's... That's odd. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's 23, 220 watt panels, I think, or 200 watts, I, can, I think it's 220 watt panels. And it should produce more than 4,500 5, kilowatt hours per year at most here in Scandinavia. And it's, it's at due south at a 22, 24 degree angle. So it's not that good. So it's interesting that it has created almost 5,500 kilowatt hours. Many years, almost 6,000. That's really impressive because that's... <laughs> 2,000 kilowatt hours over the estimation if we punch it into any calculator that calculate these things. Um, it might also be before losses, the inverter losses and some phase corrections. Um, the total energy production varies per year. 
and it says tw 2012 and 18 have notably lower levels. Um, yeah, so it kind of say it says uh, 2012 and 23 might which could blah 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 be an instant. He said, like, okay, I'm going to read it. The total energy production varies per year. This in the years 2013, 14, 15, 16, 19, 20, 20, 21, 22, 23 show high production levels. Whereas 2012 and 18 have notably lower levels, and 2018 were where I have the database corruption. Initial and final years. The years 2012 and 23 might not represent full year data, which could, could explain their lower production level, especially 2012 being the installation year, uh, likely only includes partial data. No clear trend of deg degradation. While there's no Variation in year production. There is no clear. Uh, there is no clear long-term downward trend, indicative of panel degradation. However, the dip in in the 2018 warrants further investigation to understand it was due to external factors like whether or just it was the um, it was the database issue. Consistent high production. Several years show consistent or even increased production, suggesting that the panels have been functioning effectively. Okay. Um, which day was the most pro productive day? I could do that in a in a SQL search myself, you know. But that's since we already have the data in here, um, might as well use ChatGPT. Aha! The most productive day in your data set was May. 11th, 2020, uh, uh, on this day, on 2025, was it that? Mm, produced 40.98 kilowatt hours. I, I broke the 40 kilowatt hours per day. And the reason that is, it's in May, It usually it's it's May or June might be better years. May we have a lot more sun, but it's also colder and the solar panels does not like heat. It could be interesting to match this data up with, it, with weather data from the same day for the last 11 years. Uh, yeah. Anyway, what was the highest watt output risk? Oh, I can't see that. I only have the only have the last of its day. Okay. Anyway, the conclusion so far is it's hard to see any trend that there's been any degradation. And when I haven't even cleaned my panels, I think this is quite impressive. The only thing that's cleaned my panels are um, water, rain, uh, wind, so probably mostly rain, and in the window there's snow on it. That might be a bit more abrasive and 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 remove some um, some dirt. Uh, there's often bird poop on them. Um, we had one year with a few dry months, and they were almost completely white with dust and and dirt, and we still produced almost record amount of um, electricity um, so never cleaned <laughs> never cleaned um, this is the data if you have any any suggestions what I should try to, to ask it just let me know I can run this again if we have any interesting things I could um, could try to feed it hmm anything before I quit this video what could I ask more um, what is the most productive month uh, every year? Month of the year. I'm guessing May or June. Yeah, May 2016. Uh, 936 kilowatt hours. Um, from all the years, is it is it on? Still, May that is the most productive. I think that's going to be my final question.
Okay. Across, <laughs> on average, across all the years in your data set, June is the most productive month for solar energy production, not May. The average daily energy production in uh, July is approximately 27.94 kilowatt hours with the highest average of any month. This finding reflects the typical peak solar period in many regions where the longest days usually occur in June, leading to more sunlight hours or potentially higher solar energy generation. Here's the daily energy, average daily energy production for each month based on all years for reference. And you can see that January 2.54 on average in Scandinavia, February already up to 7.2, March 15, April 24.23, May 26.82. And this is again for a 5.2 kilowatt installation, 5. Yeah, I think around 5.2. June 27.94, July 24, August 22, September 16, October 8, November 3, December uh, 3.6, December almost 2. So that's what it looked like here. And I think I would get the better output if I had more uh, <clears throat> of incline on my roof, but I do not. So yeah. So. No degradation, I never cleaned them. I never paid for have someone cleaning. I've never been on the roof cleaning myself. I have removed snow for them from them once last year during the energy crisis where kilowatt hour was almost one US dollars and it was in December and I saw the sun was shining and I knew it would be able to create around 800, 900 watts of power I could feed into my heat pump. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that day I did clean the panels to get every uh, every uh, last ray of sun into them. So, right, that's all. I'm going to end the video now. How long did this get? 22 minutes. Holy crap. Let me know if, if there's any interesting questions, we should feed it. And if I get any good suggestions or any suggestions I can use, I'll, I'll try to feed it into it again and we can see if there's something interesting. So, right, that's all for now. Until next time, have fun on the interwebs. I haven't said that in a long time. Cheers.